So let's start by looking to see if there's any welds on the material that you're looking at. So right here, this is a piece of aluminum, and you'll see an aluminum weld right here. And it's nice and clean, giving you a picture so you have an idea of what they look like. On the next picture or video, you're going to see the weld that's on a piece of stainless steel. So on these welds, you're going to see that there's a different color and there's like a tint to it because once it gets hot and heats up you're gonna see right there I'm pointing at it kinda looks purplish bluish you can just tell that there's there's a discoloration on it if that's even a word the next thing you can use is a utility knife and what you're going to do is kind of cut into it. This is a piece of aluminum, and you'll see I slow it down right here so you can see how it kind of, it'll cut into the aluminum. Very easy. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. It's going to cut and dig into it, and you'll just get a feel for it. This is a piece of stainless. I wanted you to hear what it kind of sounds like. And it just, most of the time, it's going to slide across because it's not, and it's going to have a really hard time digging into it. So, back to the piece of aluminum, you're going to see how it cuts into it and it digs into it. The hard thing about these videos is I, I can't show you the pressure that you're putting on it, but you know, it doesn't take much to cut into to aluminum. In stainless, it's very difficult. Right here, you'll see how it's just sliding. That's a piece of stainless steel. It's just going to slide across it. Sometimes it'll cut into it, but it takes a lot. Best thing to do for a utility knife is to find a, a good edge. And then right here, we have the key test. So <clears throat> I like the key test. It works, especially because we have a lot of scrap keys laying around. Um, and you, you want it, to, it's really about the pressure, the amount of pressure you have to put into it. Because if you'll see, a lot of the lines that I'm making, they kind of look the same, whether it's on stainless, that one's stainless, this is aluminum. And it kind of looks the same. Um, it's really a pressure thing. So I, I kind of know how much pressure I applied, and that'll kind of tell me uh, whether it's stainless or aluminum. But still a good test nonetheless. Right here, this is a piece of aluminum. You can see it makes kind of the same marks as stainless, but again, it, it doesn't take much. There's another piece of aluminum. Right here, we have a piece of stainless. And again, you can see the lines look the same on this piece as it did on the aluminum. It's just I, I had to push a whole lot harder to get that line in there. And that's really what makes the difference. Right here I have a piece of anodized 6063 aluminum. And whenever I scratch into it with the key, it actually takes a lot to get it to scratch into it. And that's probably because it's anodized. And this is why, you know, I, I like the key test because it's fast. Uh, but sometimes it's, it's not the best because you're like, man, that took a lot to scratch through that. Maybe it's stainless. You know, it could confuse you a little bit. But, you know, I, I would just know that this is already 6063 aluminum. I didn't get a good angle of it, but if I were to turn it, you'd see that it's 6063 aluminum. Right here we have a scratch test with a file. I really like using files because it's a little bit easier to determine. Again, you're doing it based off of, uh, you know, how how much pressure you have to put on it. That's kind of hard to show in a video, but you can see that there wasn't very much pressure applied there, and it made a pretty good indention on the, on the piece of aluminum there. It's important to look at the indention and because stainless, you know, a lot of times when you scratch into a file will also make an indention, but you've got to ask yourself how hard was it to do that. Right here I have a piece of 6063 aluminum and this is the piece that was anodized that was scratched with a key earlier. And you can see, I mean, I really didn't have to scratch that hard. It made a really big indention I mean, compared to the other 
the dentures that I've made on other stainless pieces. Right here you have a piece of aluminum. And a lot of times it's the sound that it makes too. Uh, I should have put a clip on here with the sound, but once you scratch enough items, you'll be able to tell what I'm talking about. So this is a piece of aluminum. This is 6061 aluminum. It's fairly easy to make that. It's a little bit tougher when you're not doing it on an edge, so remember that. So when you're, you're scratching a flat piece, uh, obviously that's not flat, it's rounded, but it's not a sharp edge. So it might be a little bit harder. That's probably bird poop. So this is a piece of stainless here that I'm going to scratch. It was a little bit tougher to scratch into it. And it's not going to make as big of an indention. You can see there's not much of an indention at all there. It was a lot tougher to scratch into. Here's another piece of stainless that I'm scratching into, and this one is uh, really hard to scratch into. And you can see it didn't make a huge indention into the metal itself, even though it's scratching really hard. Same thing here, and I put it on an edge. So it's going to make an indention, but not much, and I was scratching really hard. I'm just going to take my word for it. That's from earlier when I put it on a grinding wheel. I'm going to show that in a little bit. Again, another piece of stainless. May have already showed this one. I don't know. But you can tell I scratched really hard. And again, not much to show for it. Earlier I scratched into a piece that was round. It was aluminum. This piece is stainless and it's round. You can see I'm scratching a lot into it, putting a lot of pressure on it, and it's not going to do much of anything. It's just going to kind of scratch along the surface. But you can see there how it doesn't really dig into it as much as it does on the aluminum. I have a grinding wheel, and this is one of my favorites. The piece right now I'm scratching is aluminum. It's not going to make any sparks. And this is one of my favorite. And if you don't have a, you know, if you have a large plate and you're wondering what it is, you can just uh, use a grinding wheel off of a like a battery operated uh, grinder so that was a piece of stainless and you could see all the sparks that were flying off of it and I'm going to do a couple more that I'll that I'll slow down uh, so you can really see it that's a piece of aluminum and you can see how it dug in there and made a huge indention on the grinding wheel same thing this is a piece of aluminum you don't see any sparks barely put it on there barely applied pressure this is a piece of stainless and you're going to see long sparks that come off of it and you're going to see how they kind of go around the entire right there they go around the entire grinding wheel you can try to slow it down so you can see them and it goes all the way around the wheel And that's why I like using the grinding wheel the best because it's easiest to tell. This is another piece of stainless. You can see the sparks coming off of it. And of course, you're putting it on a grinding wheel. So it's going to make an indention into the metal, obviously. But, you know, if this is a piece of aluminum, it would probably be cutting it by now with the amount of pressure that I'm putting on it. Like I said, you can see all the sparks as clear as night and day. Right here I have another piece of aluminum. Again, you're not going to see any sparks. This is the last method that I really have for you. And this is only if you have a torch, whether it be propane, acetylene, whatever. Um, you know, really... You want to try 
we try our best not to have to torch stuff because you're going to lose metal and things like that. But sometimes, you know, it's the fast way to get screws off and cut it down to size so we can fit it in our baler. But we also use a shear. So right here, I'm cutting a piece of stainless. Normally, I wouldn't cut this. It's just for educational purposes. But you can see the way that it's cutting and you can see the tint that it's making as it's being cut. Same type of tint as when they weld it because they're getting the stainless hot. But you can see how the, the actual cut it looks really flaky. It's edgy and flaky. I don't know how else to describe that. Maybe someone else could come up with a better description. But again, this isn't the best method by any means. It's just easy when I'm, you know, cutting iron screws off or something like that. It's easy to tell the difference. But at this point, hopefully we've already determined what it is because we've already bought it. Right here is a piece of aluminum. You can see it melts. Just melts right off. It's a lot different. You're not going to see a big glowing uh, line there. And then on this clip, I did a piece of stainless, and right underneath it is a piece of aluminum, so you could really tell the difference side by side. So you see it glowing real hot, pushing out those flaky pieces and then it slides into the aluminum piece that just melts off and you're not going to really see a glow so a lot of people don't have access to a torch or anything like that but i'm just saying if you do and you're cutting stuff down to size cutting iron off things like that uh this could be a good method but you know make sure you use all your safety precautions i don't have time to sit here and talk about them um i will make a video on torching though because a lot of people have uh you know have trouble with a torch but uh, again, I wouldn't normally cut this piece of aluminum like this. I'm just doing it because I'm making a video. Well, all right. I hope that helped you a little bit. And uh, since I have a microphone hooked up to my computer, I'll go over this really quick. So utility knife is one thing you can use. And a file. And real quick, I want to show you what I was talking about earlier because I have a microphone hooked up to this and might get a good recording of it. But, uh, you know, listen for the sound of it. And some people might think, man, you crazy. And they might be correct. But listen, this is the sound it makes. That's aluminum. Now I have a bunch of aluminum flakes all over my computer. This one is stainless. Again, aluminum, stainless. If someone could remix that into music, that'd be really awesome. So, if you think I'm crazy, just Keep on keeping on, I guess. So this is what I was talking about, a grinder. I'm not going to bring my table grinder in here or my bench grinder. So if you have one of these, this is awesome. I mean, we use this, I mean, just, and you can grind everything for it. It's good for transformers. I mean, it's good for so many different things. But uh, that's what I was talking about. If you don't have a bench grinder, you can go up to Home Depot and buy one of these. And then, of course, you got uh, the key. Here's the key. Man, he has a mustache. Oh. Anyways, so you got the key and the torch, but I'm not gonna bring my torch inside. So uh, you're just gonna have to go back in the video if you wanna see a picture of a torch. But I hope those things helped a little bit. Hope I was descriptive enough. Uh, if not, leave a comment and uh, I hope you out. Have a great day. Don't, don't learn it.